All right, so in this video, we're taking a look at the SpeedyB V2 frame here. Uh, I did a, a frame review a couple weeks ago. Now we're going to go into the details of the build and how, how I put it together, and uh, also the flight performance and you know, my thoughts on the way this particular uh, frame flies. So nothing too unusual about this build. Pretty typical 5-inch build, you know, you've got your stack here with a, a 4 and ESC and a flight controller, video transmitter here in the back, and you got your four motors. So in this build, I did try to do something a little bit different, and someone had suggested, oh, you know, just cut the motor wires to about the approximate length and solder all the motor wire or all the motors to the 4 and ESC before you install it into the frame. So I, I tried that in this build, and I think that's, for, at least for me, was not a good idea, because as you can see here, I'm, I miscalculated the length of some of this wire here, and some of it is too long, and some of it is very tight. So if you break an arm, it's probably going to rip off that pad there on the ESC. So yeah, it's a little bit concerning. Uh, normally, the way I build is I, uh, obviously, I build the frame, I take the top, uh, don't install the top plate, so you have access to the inside. I will mount the foreign ESC first. And obviously not the flight controller because you do want to have access to uh, the solder pads. But in this case, these two 20 by 20 parts, the solder pads for this um, EUC from T-Motor T is quite accessible. You can see here, it's very easy to see, although it's a little bit dark. I'll give you a little bit of light here to see what that looks like. And you can see here that the there's no interference. So I could have uh, actually installed the flight controller um, and had complete access to the EUC pads, although uh, the battery lead in the back was a different story. Um, yeah, you should probably solder the battery lead on first to the ESC anyway before you install it into the frame and also the capacitor. But anyway, I attempted to do that and I think that was a mistake. Normally I would install the ESC first and then mount each individual motor one at a time and then I would uh, secure the motor wires like this on the arm with some tape and then cut each individual motor wire to length so that it's an exact length to uh, meet the um, pad on the ESC, leaving a little bit of slack in case you get a broken arm in a crash so that it doesn't rip off those pads. So that's what I would recommend. Um, obviously the other way is probably faster, uh, but this way, if you do it the way I recommend, it's going to be safer in case of a crash. And it looks better in, in the end. This doesn't look so great because you have different length, length motor wires here, some longer than others. doesn't look so great. Um, the connector to, uh, from the uh, ESC to the flight controller, I just used the custom one that came with uh, the ESC from T-Motor, and I just matched it to the same wire order that the uh, flight controller will expect. Uh, so it's pretty easy to do because it's the same connector uh, type in terms of the numbers. It uh, has the same two extra wires for ESC telemetry and I think um, the current value as well, the uh, current draw. So just the, the wire order is a little bit different than the standard plug. I think the T-Motor uh, 4 and run flight, uh, 4 and ESC comes with, um, well, is supposed to be mated with a T-Motor F7 flight controller, which they did not send me. This, this, the flight controller in here is from Fox here. So the wire order and the connectors is just in a different order. So I just used a custom one. That was pretty easy to do. And then of course, you know, I just soldered on uh, the receiver, which is just an XM Plus receiver, soldered on the wire for the camera, I'm using a CADX Rattel, and then soldered the wires on for the uh, video transmitter. This is the GEP RC RAD BTX, uh, 1.6 watts. It's a 30 by 30 board in the back there, so it fits, but you can see it's kind of um, oversized. I am going to swap out that video transmitter for this one here. Speedy B sent me their new. TX800, so it's a 20 by 20, looks like this, and pull this out and show you, oh, that's the heatsink, so I guess the heatsink isn't glued on, I guess that's a good thing, but that's what it looks like, obviously I haven't installed it yet, solder pads here on the bottom, looks like it's, uh, there's a connector there as well you could use. Um, I think this is 800 milliwatts. I'm not 100% sure. I'll link it in the in the video description. Looks pretty nice. It's 20 by 20, and uh, I'll have a separate video later. 
but if you guys are here for the giveaway, which I, I put in the title, which I nor nor don't normally do, but uh, SpeedyB wants to sponsor a giveaway in this uh, video. Uh, yeah, there's a going to be a link in the video description. You're going to have to follow the rules on the giveaway form. So that link takes you to a form, and on that form will be the rules for how to enter the giveaway and what you need to do. So make sure you follow those rules if you want to um, be uh, entered into the giveaway. Uh, those, I think they're going to be uh, sponsoring two of these, and I think they're going to be shipping them directly from China. Yeah, they didn't send them to me, so they only sent me one. And I will announce the winner when I release the video uh, showing how this performs. So I don't know exactly when that is, so you're gonna have to keep your notifications turned on. You know, people are like, oh, you know, when's that announcement video gonna come out? Well, you're just gonna have to be subscribed and turn your notifications turned on and check every video and wait for this one to come out. That's when I will let you know who won and how to claim your prize. But that'll be in a future video. I'm gonna swap out the one in here for the new one and then uh, you, maybe you'll see more performance on this video, the antenna here. This is their new uh, right hand circular polarized antennas. I think I showed some photos on my Instagram. They have basically four connector types um, uh, MMCX, uh, UFL, and a right, right handed or right angled MMCX. Seems like it's okay. The performance you'll see in the flight footage, I didn't really do any like long range or anything like that, so it was not a really good test. Um, but the video seemed fine. Uh, you know, analog video to me is like, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, uh, since I don't go long range in analog, as long as I, I can fly, it's good enough for me. And I'm not usually flying on super high power anyway. So like this is a 1.6 watt video transmitter. I think I was flying around on hundred milliwatts. So, you know, I, I don't do long range. So on analog at all. And, uh, so I'm not really testing it for that aspect, but you know, uh, you're probably gonna have to go to some other channel for those kind of tests anyway because I don't really do this kind of testing and show videos like that on the channel to attract attention that is unwanted. Anyway, so overall the build pretty uh, straightforward for a 5 inch build. Nothing really unusual or different. I am using these new uh, Fox here props here. I'll put up a little picture of what, the, what, the, what these are. Um, I forgot the name of these. A little bit higher pitched. It's perhaps why uh, on this higher KV motor, this is drawing a lot of amps. So this is a 2306, uh, 2550 KV motor. So it's a, it's a pacer series V2. Uh, so freestyle motor, it's, I think you're going to probably want to meet this motor with a lower pitched prop than this one. Cause I was pretty much killing my battery. You'll see that in the flight demo. I mean, I was using a fairly decent battery. Well, this is not that new. This is an R line tattoo version one so i've had this for a while it's got a lot of flights on it so it, it perhaps needs replacing but it's not puffy or anything like that and doesn't get hot so i don't i think there's that uh this particular setup with this motor even though i'm running 96 kilohertz on the escs is drawing a lot of current because of the props so i think i mean i may have, i, I may sh uh, i should have used a different lower pitch prop on this a little bit higher kv motor just to get a little bit better efficiency. It did have plenty, plenty of power and pop for five inch, you know, no complaints there. So if you're looking for that and don't mind the hit on flight time, uh, yeah, this is not a bad way to go. Now in terms of the balance of the frame and everything like that, you know, I flew just on beta flight defaults and I was running 96 kilohertz on the ESC. So I did turn on RPM filter for that, uh, running DSHOT 600, but just beta flight default PIDs. No, I didn't do any PID changes at all. And you know, just to see how well balanced the frame is for a five inch and it was, it was totally fine. Uh, very little prop wash. Um, so, and then, you know, no, no complaints in terms of like weird stuff, weird oscillations in the frame. Uh, didn't really notice anything that in the flying that I was doing. All right. So let's see how much this weighs. This is the complete build 375 and a half. So, uh, you know, not bad. I'm actually kind of on the lighter side and then I put on the 4S uh, 1550 battery. Now we're at 570. And of course, I was flying with a, this is a Hero 6. So this is the all up flying weight here, 687. So, yes, then, you know, with all this stuff, with the battery and everything, it's a little bit heavier. 
uh, probably average to slightly above average. I think um, if you go above 700, I would consider that kind of on the heavier side. So we're getting up there. Uh, I, I would say maybe go to a 1300 for us and a lower pitched prop. Um, I think that's probably going to be the better way to go on this motor setup to give, to give you a good balance of performance and flight time. Okay, so I think it's going to do it for this video. Uh, stay tuned for the uh, giveaway announcement for the video transmitter. And make sure you follow the rules in the uh, giveaway form link in the description. All the parts for this build will also be linked in the description as well. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.